Hi, welcome to Fundamentals Friday. What if I told you that this piece of one ounce copper clad board was exactly the same end to end resistance as this piece here? Or I could go one further and say that this monster sheet of copper clad, once again, one ounce, it's green because it's got a uh, positive uh, pre photo resist coated on it. But what if I said that's exactly the same resistance as this tiny little piece of exactly the same one ounce copper? You'd call me crazy, right? But no, not really. Hang around and I'll explain what I'm talking about, why this is true, and I'll demonstrate it. Now this topic comes up because of a previous video I did on precision thin film resistor networks, which I'll link in down below if you haven't seen it. I sort of made the uh, throwaway comment in that video that one piece of uh, resistive material, be it copper or nichrome or anything else, which I'll explain, is exactly the same resistance, I, it might be one milliohm for example, as a much larger piece if they're both squares like this. And this confused a lot of people. So what they do with these precision thin film resistor networks, they've got a ceramic base and they might coat them with say a nichrome material which has a relatively high resistance uh, per area. It might be 100 ohms per square for example and this is how they create them. They uh, put the, a film of the material on there and then they might laser cut like that certain areas out to uh, increase the resistance and trim it to the exact resistance that you require. And this is actually the same method that they use to make your thin film 0805, you know, 0603 resistors, the SMD resistors that you're familiar with. And exactly the same property regardless of whether or not it's nichrome or whether it's just a regular copper clad PCB. It's exactly the same in that no matter how big the square of copper or nichrome is, it's going to be exactly the same resistance regardless of the size. So this brings up a really interesting property called sheet resistance and its units are ohms per square. Not ohms per square meter or ohms per square centimeter or other area, there is no area units on it, it's just ohms per square. And copper clad uh, PCB will have a figure for ohms per square, your uh, nichrome will have a figure for ohms per square and pretty much any material which has a uniform thickness like this, be it copper clad or whether or not it's a 3D solid body, it can also have that. So it's just as long as you've got a uniform thickness on the material, you can talk in terms of sheet resistance. So if we take a look at a piece of resistive material, in this case copper clad, which we'll work with, then of course we have a length, a width and a thickness. It's one ounce copper, about 35 microns or thereabouts uh, universal thickness. Now the resistance of uh, this piece of copper or whatever material it is, is the resistivity, which is, that's not a P, it's the symbol rho, and that's the material resistivity. Each, each material will have its own resistivity figure, and we'll take a look at that. And then it's multiplied by the length divided by the area. Now, of course, the area is so length on width times thickness, that's the area. Now if we take that formula and we just rearrange it a little bit, it's still exactly the same, just to make it a little bit clearer, you'll see why in a second. So it's rho on thickness times the length on the width. And you'll notice this here, because now it's now a separate term, what if the length and the width are the same, i.e. a square that we were talking about here. Well that becomes one. So it's multiplied by one. So all we're left with in the case of a square, the resistance is only determined by rho on the thickness. It's got nothing to do with how big this square is. Doesn't matter if it's that big or if it's that big like that, it's still one. The only thing that matters is the thickness. And it's not just a square either. If you had a small rectangle like that, which was say like two squares joined, and you had another one there, which was exactly the same, it's the same thing. It's just a different ratio there, instead of being one, it's something else. So no matter how big the rectangle is, the resistance is going to stay exactly the same. But I know what you're thinking, Dave, that doesn't make sense. I know for a fact that if I have a longer 
trace, I'm going to get more resistance. So what the hell is going on here? And well, I haven't lied to you. This is actually true. The resistance of this smaller one is exactly the same resistance of this bigger one. But there's a catch. It all has to do with how you connect to it. Now, in this case, sheet resistance and the examples we're talking about here assume that you connect across the entire length like of the end like that from one side to the other. If you just solder a wire on there and a wire on there like that, eh, all bets are off. This theory does, well, it, the theory still works, but it's, it, you have to calculate it differently. So if you physically connect, like have one big long contact strip across there and across there, then, and here and here, then, trust me, and we'll measure it in a minute, this resistance of this bigger one will be exactly the same as that one. That's what sheet resistance is all about and why it's a unit without a dimensional area. It's just units, uh, ohms per square. It doesn't matter how big the square is. And that's why it's actually quite relevant to these uh, thin film resistor networks here because if you've seen the previous video, take a look. I might include a photo uh, screenshot here. They'll have like a big conductive piece on there that connects to the pin which overlays onto the much higher resistance resistive nichrome material so that you do effectively get a, you know, a big connection point on the one end. It's not just like a single wire point connecting usually. And it's even more appropriate with your standard thin film resistor networks as well because they'll have like a bulk connection on one end like that and then you might have your little laser trim cut in there, something like that to trim the value. But you're connecting across, you know, uh, the entire end piece of that resistive material. So what it all comes down to and how you can analyse sheet resistances like this and think about it is in terms of squares. So if you just got a single square like this, then our ratio is one here. Then, but if you put two squares like this in series effectively, then of course you're going to double your resistance. Put a third square over here, make your trace, make your copper uh, PCB trace longer, then you get a longer resistance again and again. If we were just uh, adding things up like that, it's all about the connection point. Remember, a solid connection point at the end. But what if it was just a single connection point like this? Well then, yeah, then you start getting into the fact that, okay, you've got a square here, a square here, and all the way along there, but then you've got squares in parallel up here like this, and you can uh, kind of divide it up, or you can say, okay, I've got a big square like this, and then I've got other ones, oh, and it gets a bit tricky. So yes, if you've got a just a single connection point like that instead of the entire edge, then of course, yes, you're going to have all those extra little squares, however you want to sort of break it up and figure it out and sort of you know, guesstimate it based on um, square areas, then yeah, of course your resistance is going to lower because you've got all these extra squares in parallel and it just becomes a different geometrical problem than the one of, that we've been talking about, about a single square piece of copper. But that's really essentially how it works with you know your SMD resistors, how they trim them, and your thin film resistor networks. You know you can say, okay, we've got a, a big square there, and we might say we've got a square there and a square there, and it just becomes a real difficult uh, geometrical uh, problem based on squares and things like that. But that's generally how you can think about it, and the whole aspect why it's called ohms per square. So you'll analyze this based on a square which is a dimensionless quantity. It's just a square. It doesn't matter how big or how small it is. So just to complete this, what is the sheet resistance of typical one ounce copper clad PCB material? I'm glad you asked. Let's take a quick look at it. It is rho on the thickness, remember? So our sheet resistance of typical one ounce copper is the rho, the material resistivity of copper, is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 8 ohm meters. That's ohm meters, not ohms per meter. Ohm meters is the units of resistivity of a material, whether copper or anything else. And we divide that by a uh, one ounce copper clad board is around about 35 uh, microns thickness. And that comes out to 0.5 milliohms per square. Not per square meter, not per square centimeter, 
per square, like that. Doesn't matter how big it is, remember? But there's one very important point to be made here, is that this sheet resistance, ohms per square, does not change. It never changes, regardless of what shape you can have a weird and wonderful shape, no matter how many laser cuts you put in there in your fin film, it doesn't matter. The sheet resistance is a constant for that particular material and thickness and everything else. It doesn't change. All you're doing is changing your electrical resistance between one end and the other for your practical purpose. And the mathematicians out there can get really excited about this sort of stuff and you can prove that how you add up the squares and everything and it's always going to come back to the exact same ohms per square figure. And there's all sorts of mathematical proofs. <laughs> Go for your life. So I know what you're thinking, Dave, I still don't believe it. Show us some measurements. Okay, let's go to the bench and prove that this theory is actually true. Now, I would love to show you how this works on a piece of copper clad board, but unfortunately that's not going to be easy because as you saw, 0.5 milliohms, i.e. 500 microohms per square, and trying to get a uh, some sort of uh, contact probe which probes along all the ends like that of the thing down in the microohm region is just is just not practical. So unfortunately, we're going to have to use something else. Now, I'd love to use like a uh, sheet of uh, nichrome, um, for example, like they're using those thin film resistor networks at like 100 ohms uh, per square. That'd be really controlled and that'd be really nice. Unfortunately, I don't have something like that. But what I do have is, ta-da, a conductive um, anti-static mat. You've uh, seen these. You plug your ICs, this high density uh, foam that you can get and these it's not going to be a hugely controlled resistance across here across the material this is you know it's reasonably thick but as I said it doesn't matter about the thickness as long as it's a uniform thickness across there anyway this will have a much higher resistance you know tens of k hundreds of k that sort of thing so we should be able to use this as uh, to get some ballpark measurements and prove this thing so to do this experiment, what I've got is some conductive foam I got from uh, JCAR. I have no idea what the sheet resistance of this uh, stuff is. Don't have a data sheet for it or anything. I cut these from exactly the same uh, larger sheet, so they're all identical. And I've got two uh, copper clad plates which allow me to get the um, a contact along the full edge like that. And of course it doesn't matter if it's longer than that it's no problem you just have to contact along the entire edge like that as i uh, as we saw on the whiteboard and then we're just going to measure the resistance let's try it now the size of these squares doesn't really matter but hey each one is about a quarter of the size than the one before it so let's give that a burl okay i've got my meter on a fixed range here the 50k ohm range and let's put these plates on now Unfortunately, the resistance is going to vary depending on the amount of pressure I put on. That's just a function of the, um, you know, of the material and the contact area and things like that. And no, my hands aren't uh, touching. Sorry, I'll get out of uh, shot there. And basically, what I'll do is I'll apply a large amount of pressure on there and get sort of a minimum value. So I'll put like maximum pressure on all of them and I'm getting around about 5k there. I'm going to take that as say 5k, right? So that's about as high a pressure as I can get. I'll get my smaller one here and let's see if it's the same. It should be if I apply even pressure because you've got to have that even contact. Bingo, there it is. There's your there's your 5 odd there's your 5 odd K. I know it's bouncing around and I know people will complain that oh it's not a controlled test. It's as good as I can do here, now let's put in the smaller one, and, whoop, because we've got to make contact over the whole area, bingo, look at that, we're still around about that 5k figure with even pressure on all of those, so ta-da, we've essentially proven and demonstrated there that the sheet resistance, the ohms per square, not square millimetre, not square metre, not square furlong, ohms per square of this material is um, not determined by the, si the physical size. 
then of course you'd get exactly the same result, be it a copper clad board, regardless of how uh, thick it is, a solid piece of copper or some other metal or anything else. Um, and of course you have to contact the entire edge of that thing you can't just like like go on the like at an angle on the top like that it's not going to uh, work so you have to get the entire if it's a bulk material like that on the entire thing so the thinner it gets down to the level where it's you know like 35 microns thick on a PCB uh, copper clad like this then basically you can just put like a contact on the edge but of course copper this is so incredibly low resistance um, and then you have to do proper four terminal measurement across the entire edge oh I it's just a nightmare but this conductive foam demonstrates it rather nicely and it it's not like a close analogy or anything like that it is exactly the same thing as copper clad or nichrome or any other material whatsoever it's just that um, yeah this is not hugely controlled but it was good enough to see that you know, if, if you expect something higher, if I chop that in a quarter again, we'll get exactly the same result. Heck, let's do that. Here we go. We got a tiny, tiny little piece in there like that. And let's, there we go. It's still around about that 5K figure. Depends on the uh, uh, pressure and things like that. So you would expect that to increase based on, you know, before you knew about sheet resistance, you would think this would be much larger resistance than this massive sheet here. But it's not. It's ohms per square. And if you don't believe me that it adds up, well, I've cut that square in half. It's slightly wonky, but anyway, it's good enough. This should only give us 10. There we go. We've got ourselves 10. I can get it. I can't get it much lower than that. Look, it's double. It is. It has increased. Double. Oh, now it's starting to bend and it's getting a bit tricky, but you saw it. And if we do three times the length, there we go. There's our, oh, there's our 15 odd K. So just think about the sheet resistance next time you're uh, calculating the resistance of a PCB uh, trace, for example, because this is not just theoretical mumbo jumbo. It has real world practical applications. If you've got a PCB trace like this, you are actually going to have pretty much an end to end connection like the entire edge on here and the entire edge over here because imagine this is a little tiny you know 10 thou trace or whatever going into a surface mount component at this end a surface mount component at that end then you you know you're basically touching the entire edge so you can divide this up into squares one two three four or however many squares length so you know the sheet resistance of one ounce copper uh you can say it's like a rule of thumb it's going to be pretty darn precisely close to it actually um 0.5 milliohms per square just count up the number of squares you got you can calculate the length of your trace brilliant and that will apply to copper or any other material which has its sheet resistance specified so I hope you found that Fundamentals Friday useful. A lot of people don't know about sheet resistance because it's a little bit counterintuitive to what they're used to, but it's a real thing. And it's how materials like the nichrome films and, and copper clad PCB and other stuff are actually uh, specified. So there you go. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up because that always helps a lot. And if you want to discuss it, jump on over to the EEV blog forum or leave YouTube or blog comments. Catch you next time.